man, I've been going for a bit, and it really seems like my arch nemesis, Lori Alexander, has been taking full advantage. I've missed Twitter rants where she's claimed bikinis cause unwanted pregnancies, bemoaned the existence of preschools, and explained the proper way of grooming children. I should never let her have a head start. But yeah, it's been a busy couple of weeks in the world of misogyny because it's, you know, the world. Let's start in the nation's capital where a lawsuit was recently dismissed against a guy who set up shop on the sidewalk outside of a school claiming to be a counselor despite having no relevant credentials in that field. His lawyers moved to have the case dismissed on free speech grounds, and at first the courts told them to fuck off. But it turns out that he was really set up on that sidewalk because it was also next to a Planned Parenthood clinic. So the Liberty Council got involved and got the case dismissed on appeal. So to be clear, when it was children he was offering bogus counseling to, it was worth a day in court. When it turned out it was just women, the courts decided eh, it was okay. But I've got far worse to talk about this week. I know I'm a little late to this story, but I can't let this one go by without comment. A couple weeks ago, the Ohio State Legislature passed possibly the most damaging and disgusting anti-trans legislation in the country, which is a really high bar to clear. Not only did they bar trans girls from competing in gender-appropriate sports, but they added a jaw-dropping provision that would force female athletes to undergo an invasive genital inspection if anybody expresses doubts about an athlete's birth certificate's opinion on their gender. And lest I graze over how terrifying this is, I want to draw your attention back to the word invasive there. And look, even if this bill works exactly as they planned it to work, it's disgusting. Hell, one could make an argument that finding new ways to exclude and isolate trans people is homicidal. But even transphobes should be terrified of this law. It says if a participant's sex is disputed, their wording, not mine, by anyone, the athlete must provide a doctor's note confirming their physical sex on the basis of, quote, the participant's internal and external reproductive anatomy, end quote. This dispute could come from a losing student, a bitter parent, a jilted ex-boyfriend. It doesn't matter. So as vicious as the intent is, the execution is somehow even worse. But I'm not only bringing bad news this week. I also have an encouraging story out of, believe it or not, Florida, where, believe it or not, a religious group is doing a good thing in the, believe it or not, abortion debate. Specifically, a Jewish group has filed a lawsuit claiming that the state's 15-week abortion ban, which goes into effect next month, is a violation of the religious freedom, as Judaism requires women to have control of their bodies. According to the lawsuit, quote, in Jewish law, abortion is required, if necessary, to protect the health mental or physical well-being of the woman, or for many other reasons not permitted under the act, end quote. And they're definitely right. Hell, even the part of their scriptures that Christians co-opted, there's at least one instance where the book requires an abortion. It even gives you a magical abortion spell. I should also at least mention the fact that the Southern Baptist Convention made quite a bit of press last week when they debated admitting female pastors. I'm hesitant to call this good news in any meaningful sense, since it's just a debate. No changes have been announced. What's more, they're almost certainly doing it to distract from the devastating child sex abuse report that just came out about them. So it's also cynical as hell. But still, when you're far enough behind the times, pretty much any step is a step forward. So reserved and partial kudos to the SBC, I guess. And quick before hell freezes over, I suppose I should hand things back over to Noah and Heath. 